Yeah, but let's talk about Art Fault Breakers for yeah. a second. I remember when they first came out, everyone was, these receptacles, you did a bad job. I plugged in my vacuum cleaner in my bedroom. Art Fault Breakers were designed, just so you know, to go by your beds. They started in the bedrooms. Because why? Everyone put their bed against the receptacles on the wall. Your sheets are hanging down. Your blankets are hanging down. The lights are plugged into it. Everything else is plugged into it. And all of a sudden, because there's a little arc there right at the receptacle where it's plugged in, the sheets go on fire and causes a fire. So arc fault breakers or arc fault receptacles. Sorry, we do have arc, we do have arc fault receptacles now, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so arc fault breakers were introduced to try and stop that from happening. If it senses anything to do on that circuit, that it's going to have an arc or any arcing, it trips the breaker. People complained about that because they were so sensitive, their vacuums set off the breaker. It's trying to teach people that the breakers are now code and they have to, you have to have them. It's not like, oh, I don't like that, change that breaker. No, no, that's there to save you. That's there to, to make sure your house doesn't catch on fire. And, and ignition sources are typically behind walls where we don't see them, right? So you've got insulation behind those walls. So you talked about having the bed sheets catch on fire. That's something that you can physically see. Some of the dangers lie behind the drywall or behind you know, the walls in, in general. And our breakers are designed to trip that circuit so that it trips to safe. So it doesn't overheat. Correct. Doesn't start arcing and make a fire. Correct. And this is gonna be based also on old houses to new houses. Old houses, oh my goodness. It could have been played with electrical all for years and years. Say a house is 70 years old. First person may have made some changes along the way, sold the house, they came in, they did some renos. And how many times that house has been renovated means how many times electrical's been touched, plumbing's been touched, and is it right? Are there hidden junction boxes? Well, if you watch my show, it's, it's on every single home. It's not, a, it's not a surprise anymore to me. It's on every single home, hidden junction points. And what are the junctions? Is it aluminum to copper? That's a, bad, that's a bad thing. Aluminum and copper heat up and expand differently. Correct. Right? One's oval, one's round. That's copper's round, aluminum is oval. This is what happens when you pony the wires together, when they heat up because you put it, you plugged in a 1500 watt heater and you left it on for way too long, that connection gets very, very hot. You ever reached and grabbed that plug? You can feel how hot that plug is using that much wattage. It's not going to blow the breaker because the breaker says it's not being overpowered. It's not in, you know, anything over 1800 watts to blow the breaker. So it heats up. That junction point becomes a fire hazard or an arc hazard. And that's why we bring in the arc breakers. This is part of code that most people should not understand, right? They don't need to understand it. It's on the experts to understand it and to make your home safer by you know, introducing you to this different type of technology, especially in remodels. So the National Electrical Code is obviously, as you're standing up and building new homes, they have to build them to code, right? It's, it's a requirement, it's a must. When you're doing renovation inside the home, it's, it's really important for you to consider actually improving your home all the way to the latest revision of the National Electrical Code because What's good for us 10 years ago is good for us today as well, right? And if you think about it, when fuses were around, you know, you remember the fuses? Oh, I sure do. That, that's when the Model T was, was a car, right? Or horse and buggy, right? We don't see horse and buggy or Model Ts around anymore, right? So it's really important for us to understand that as everything else progresses, our electrical systems need to progress as well. And all it's doing is keeping us safer as families inside our house. I still see fuse panels. I still see them out there. Or we go into houses like, oh man, you still got a fuse panel? And the biggest mistake people do out there with a fuse panel is that fuse keeps blowing. They'll go from a 15 amp fuse up to a 20 amp fuse. And that's a no-no because now you're allowing the lines in the wall, especially if it's old wiring, to even get hotter. This is a big fire issue for your home. And that's only because we've gotten lazy and we don't want to keep changing the fuse. We yep. think it's okay. It's not okay. That's why if you have fuses, 
bring in a licensed electrical contractor and put in a new panel. And odds are you're gonna have a little bit more electrical work to do in that home. How many times have I gone to a home and they said, Mike, we want a new bathroom. You know, maybe we'll do a kitchen too. And I, I signed the contract, we're gonna do it. But when I actually look inside the house, my electrician comes in and he goes, man, this place needs to be rewired. There's no ground in the house. Now that's a problem. This becomes a costly thing. I'd, I'd like to really educate people to the point of when you buy a new home or an old home, especially an old home, that you hire a licensed electrical contractor to go take a look at it before you buy it. And, and to be honest with you, even when you're replacing appliances and things of that nature, something as small as that can, can have, uh, you know, extra load that's, that's tied into your load center. So as we start to think about electrifying the, the U.S. and Canada, you know, adding EV chargers or adding some appliances that may have at one time been gas powered and now are transitioning to electric, it's really important for us to do a quick evaluation of your electrical system to make sure A, you can support that device and B, really as a safety inspection, we're not trying to make things more difficult here, Mike. That's truly not what we're trying to do. We're trying to make things safer.